I still remember the last movie I saw at the Roxy. It was Bonnie and Clyde, the most memorable movie I ever saw there, which is still my favorite movie of all times, was in 1950, To Please a Lady, starring Clark Gable and Barbara Stanwyck. Of course, it was a racing movie, and I believe Clark Gable got killed in the end. The Three Stooges and Little Rascals were my favorite comedies, and I can't forget the wonderful cartoons that were so unlike the demonic ones that children are exposed to today. Wild-looking children, animals, and violence that were never present in my day, not even in The Roadrunner. We kids would sit as long as we could, hoping no one would notice us, and we would get to watch the shows again. Sometimes we hid under the seats or in the balcony. Friends and Loved Ones We were all kids together, including Paul Fatboy Raymond, Jimmy Durham, Donnie, Tom, Sam, Billy, Ben, and Harry Harrington, Arnett Butts, Buford Slugger Marklin, Charlie, Tom, and Alf Rollins, James Wallace, Jerry, and William Earl Binkley, cousins, Buddy Wright, Ronnie and Bobby Moulton, Larry Walker, and Herbert Bunch, I could go on and on, but time would fail me. I actually sold a guitar to Herbert Bunch for about $5, and he still has it today. He went on to be a fine singer and guitar player in the bluegrass field. We were a close-knit bunch that stuck together through thick and thin, mostly thin. We were as poor as Job's turkey, but didn't realize it because everyone around us was in the same condition. Most were so poor, it was like the song said, if the big bad wolf came to our front door, he'd have to bring a picnic lunch. Like any kid, we wanted things. However, if you couldn't get a certain thing, you just accepted it and moved on. We didn't bawl and squall and pitch a fit. No, no, not in those days. If you even tried that, you'd have to pay with your hide. You see, we didn't have a so-called child protection agency to protect us from a whooping because we considered a spanking a whooping, and that was all there was to it. All the kids I knew back then turned out reasonably well in spite of the fact that there was not a Department of Human Services to protect them from their evil parents who allowed them to get dirty and play games that would impact the political correctness agenda. The closest thing to a Department of Human Services was the churches. At that time, the church was the only thing even close to what we have today in the way of social services. We did have the Red Shield, Salvation Army, and Big Brothers, without which I believe life would have been much harder. That is why today I try to support these organizations. If the liberal crowd had its way, these wonderful organizations would be out of business because they don't fit the mold that society wants us to put our kids in. Their goal, I believe, is to get their hands on our children and fill their little minds with junk that will in no way prepare them for the world they face. They seem to gravitate toward the black folks and they seem to eat it up. Wake up, America. Taking away privileges? There was no taking away of television, cell phone, or driving privileges back then because we had none of those things. There wasn't even a punishment called time out unless you consider the teacher making you stand in the corner until you promise to behave. In every case I can remember, I deserved the whippings I got. Thank God we had teachers who cared enough and had the authority to correct us or even paddle us if we didn't behave. Today, the parents and some lawyers uphold these kids, and we now see the mess our school systems are in. Some teachers really are not worried about the lives they are helping to mold. Though we couldn't see it back then, I sure do now. The tender, loving care they offered was invaluable. I'm afraid we have lost something valuable along the way in our quest to be better than the Joneses. Some of our teachers are worried about the teachers' unions rather than the kids. The teachers in my day probably made $100 a week, but their heart was not based on money. I am convinced that most they did it for the love of the kids. Don't get me wrong, 
I'm not placing all teachers in this category, but I am sure there are quite a few who, as long as they get their paycheck, could not care less if the kids learn to read and write. I am brokenhearted when I see a sixth grader in a private school tutor. It's on 11th grade in public school. I believe this is the main problem in our society today. Schools are holding pens for unruly kids who sit all day and play video games and cut up. I remember visiting a public school in 1990 to deliver some signs to the principal, and I could not believe the noise coming from the rooms, especially the lunchroom. At about the same time, I visited the Christian school my daughters attended. I am not lying when I say you could have heard a pin drop in the halls and in the rooms. Don't tell me that the kids can't be made to mind. There is a difference in teachers who care and those who don't. Working for it. We lived in an era in which if you didn't earn it, you didn't get it. Though my daddy and mama, I'm sure, wanted to do much better for us, it just didn't work out that way. I can tell you one thing, it's not because my mama and daddy didn't try. I don't know what went on in their hearts, but I'm sure they suffered with the fact that we didn't have things a lot better. I know for sure that at times they didn't know where their next meal was coming from, but somehow we always made it. I believe the song Mama's Hungry Eyes was written about someone who lived the same kind of life as we did. I can remember those who had a lot less than we did. There were the Beatties who lived by the railroad under the North First Street Viaduct. We used to share a Coke with the little kids and sometimes a candy bar when we had it. Those memories make me think of kids from a third world country. Most of the black people were in the same shape. As I said, we would do almost anything to earn a nickel or a dime to buy an RC Cola and a Moon Pie. We took out trash, gathered up old rags to sell to the ragman, shoveled snow in the winter, and brought in kindling and coal for the old folks in the neighborhood. I even took on a newspaper route one time by myself and another time with Buddy Wright. I remember Daddy saying, you'll never be able to do that. It's too early in the morning for you. And he was right. That newspaper route lasted about one month until the first really cold morning. We did this route on a bicycle with a basket on it. There were no free rides, no allowance, and no rewards for doing right. You just did right or else. Yes, working for a few pennies was just a normal thing for us kids, and somehow we didn't seem to mind it. Try that with some kid today. Old man Vaughn made us clean up his workshop if we asked him to put air in our bicycle tires. I remember he charged us kids 25 cents to align the spokes in our wheels. Needless to say, a lot of kids went around riding their bicycles with wobbling wheels. 25 cents was sometimes a whole day's work for us. The Joey Chitwood Thrill Show Boy, do I remember the Joey Chitwood Thrill Show when I was a kid. They would do all kinds of tricks with those cars. One would go all the way around the track on two wheels, and another would jump over a group of five or six cars parked on the front straightaway. I remember them setting a big box ablaze and then jumping over a big ramp and crashing through it. As we will talk about later, our gang would do some of the same tricks on our little soapboxes or on our bicycles. I guess the things kids enjoyed most of all were the clowns. They gave us a reason to smile when we were feeling low. They would stand on the track, and when the cars in the thrill show would come by, the cars would seem to knock their clothes off and leave them standing